Welcome everyone, Kostin here with a discussion about the undead in Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. Now I did a community poll asking people what they would like from an undead perspective with DLC from Creative Assembly. And these are your votes as they currently stand. Now keep in mind with these polls I generally stop at like 1k votes and I conclude that's the result, but sometimes things do change. Not often, but they do change occasionally. And so the race stands up at the bottom is the Tomb Kings. I can understand it. The Tomb Kings kind of don't need a rework, but they do need a rework. Their limited army capacity is not great. Their campaigns are not really that fun. Arkhan is better, but plenty of issues with respect to that. Although people do like Cetra more than they like Arkhan, but who doesn't like Cetra as a character at the end of the day? It's just a shame that his campaign is intolerable at the beginning and I'm not saying it's difficult for me the idea of difficulty doesn't really matter you can manage any campaign if you know what you're doing regardless of it it's just a bad design to have only one army for 15 turns and then have to deal with this the canopic jar situation oh boy do I love the canopic jar situation it is so much fun having a resource that's limited to 30 because it doesn't matter what kind of battles you fight, you'll always only get 30 canopic jars in your campaign. That's great. That really is great, CA. Like, genuinely. <laughs> Not at all. So, there's a lot of problems in this campaign because of, like, just the design. And the problem is, once you overcome that early game situation, it becomes a steamroll. So, in every Tomb King campaign, that's the kind of situation you're dealing with. Kalida's campaign is like this, Cetra's campaign is like this, Katep's campaign is like this. Arkhan is different, but Arkhan's campaign is basically a steamroll from turn one. So not that, all that much better in any real way. So you end up with a race that steamrolls and trivializes the game in mid-late game and suffers very much early on. Also, really bad victory conditions, the books on Nagash aren't great. Yeah, I think Tomb Kings need an update. They haven't gotten any. Like, we've seen DLC races get updates. We've seen DLC races get new content. The, the Tomb Kings do need new content. They got some free stuff, to be sure, but they need a proper DLC update to work in the Warhammer free meta. In the second worst position, or at number three, depending on how you want to view it, it is the Vampire Coast. I do certainly think the Vampire Coast, out of all of the undead races, needs improvements the most. Their entire army roster just doesn't work. You might say, oh, zombies are cheap and easily acquired, but here's the thing, Warhammer 3 doesn't play around the idea of, oh, you get units, you throw them away, you get more units. You want to get unit experience, you want to get high ranks. Previously, that wouldn't matter as much because getting a lot of high ranks of units was kind of difficult for a player. You would have to spend a long time, so it wouldn't, didn't matter that much that these guys didn't have good experience. But now, when you can get when you can play virtually every other faction and get even your most basic army to gold rank on a regular basis and relatively quickly, that does matter. It matters in the early game, it matters in the late game. Sieges are a freaking nightmare with these guys because, yeah, you have plenty of ways to blow up the walls and blow up units behind the walls, but you don't have the infantry to secure what's behind the walls with the exception of depth guard. And more goals, I guess you could say about that. Their artillery is not even the best in the game. You might say, oh, their artillery are great. Yeah, they only have one Queen Bess, and beyond that, they have cannons and superpower mortars. The mortars are great, but everything else, mm, kind of meaningless. You can make it work, don't get me wrong, but they do certainly need an overhaul. A lot of their mechanics were taken from other races, like you have the office system, which was replaced for every other race in the freaking game, except Wood Elves for whatever reason, and it's not really a great mechanic for them either. Um, you have shipbuilding, which was then taken by other races to make the Beastmen Horde armies, or to make, um, or to improve Black Arcs, and Dark Elves are masters of the sea, as it is right now, because of how that system works. You have X, Y, and Z system that was just a testing ground, really, for Creative Assembly, and then they took those systems and improved them up for other races, and that's why the Vampire Coast needs an update. Will they get one? I do certainly hope so, in terms of the unit roster. Not necessarily the Legendary Lord roster, and they kind of already put every character they could think of, and even one that wasn't, and Silostra, but still, yeah, they 
absolutely need an update. And while a lot of people didn't care, and these guys almost lost to Tomb Kings on the poll, by the way. In fact, for a long time they did lose, only recently they went up by 1% versus the Tomb Kings in terms of the lowest priority. Yeah, I really wish the Vampire Coast was a better race. They, they've always looked cool. The trailer, fantastic. Their music, fantastic. The idea of their campaign, fantastic. But the actual execution of the campaign, not so great in Warhammer 3. Much better in Warhammer 2. Not so much in Warhammer 3. And number two, in terms of the community priority, is the Vampire Counts. I'll be honest with you guys, I really don't think the Vampire Counts should be the highest priority on this list of existing races. Because or existing lords, because to be quite honest on that subject, they just work. Like, in fact, I would dare say that they work the best in Warhammer 3 uh, out of all of the games in the series. I didn't play much of them in Warhammer 1 and 2. I mean, I tried them, it was just not really a great experience in a lot of ways. <laughs> Whereas in 3, the level of power that you do have in this campaign, the diplomatic power, the economic power, the vassalization power, the unit roster, the hero roster, the lord roster, it's powerful. And the campaigns are unique. Kemmler and Gors may not necessarily be that fun, and Manfred is Manfred, but hey, you got Vlad and Isabella as two really great campaigns, or one really great campaign, because it's basically the same campaign, it's just down to the different faction effects. I recommend starting with Isabella as the Legendary Lord and Vlad as the Legendary Hero, much more powerful than otherwise. Still, really good situation with them. Can't really complain, but... I guess I understand the community's perspective on this. The Vampire Counts only got one DLC. One. They got some stuff with the Vampire Coast when that came out, but they've only gotten one proper racial DLC, and it just added units and a hero and a couple of other things, right? They got a more significant update with the Bloodlines effect, to be sure, but all the same, they've been left behind with the exception of the Groom the Grave, which is one of the worst DLCs that CA ever released. Certainly the least interesting DLC. I wouldn't necessarily say it's bad, but um, I would not play either Volkmar's or Gorst's campaign at the moment. I'll just leave it there. You can make up your mind about that. So suffice to say that they could really use more content. Not necessarily a racial rework, though I would certainly argue that in favor of making the individual Legendary Lords more unique. And, I don't know, with Vlad and Isabella, I kind of feel it's a bit off that Isabella is the better Legendary Lord. I just kind of feel like I would remove Isabella as a Legendary Lord campaign and just kind of mix those effects. Just my personal perspective on that subject. Let me know what you guys think about that. But still, it does work. Can't complain. Interesting campaigns, interesting campaign mechanics. I wish we could get blood kisses in a different way rather than sending our very powerful heroes that can solve freaking armies and to assassinate someone on the campaign map because that's not particularly interesting. But outside of that, really, I can't complain about the situation we have with the vampire accounts. Because uh, compared to many other races, including the ones on this list, compared to many other legendary lords like Katep, Setra, Kalida, you can talk about um, uh, you can talk about Silostra or even for Harkon. Compared to those, yeah, I don't think this should be a priority for CA, but I understand where the community is coming from. They want more content for this race. And then finally, and number one, it is Nagash, the Supreme Lord of Undef. Or so he would like to believe, really. I mean, he did create necromancy as we know it. But yeah, he's... Uh, He's a character. He's a very, very arrogant character. In fact, he's probably the greatest evil character in the entire setting. For good reason. For many, many good reasons. There is a mod that does add them in the game, and this is what I have. Now, for my part, I do think a Creative Assembly should do things in a very different way, but the concepts are like getting a gash back, get his power back, make him even more powerful after devouring the god of the underworld basically more or the equivalent for the tomb kings i mean it's the same god apparently based on the lore and well just paint the rest of the cam campaign map however we will and also uh, move the black pyramid of nagash if you uh, so desire giving you significant possibilities as well as gaining characters like uh, manfred oh dear but you get Krell, you get Nef uh, Neferata, uh, you get Vlad, you get a bunch of other 
characters available. That would be great. And how you would deal with Nagash, well, based on what I've heard, Creative Assembly is going to launch a full expansion that's going to be priced probably the most expensive in the history of the game. We shall see how CA decides to do that. But this is what people want. Nagash would have units from all of the undead factions, so Coast, Counts, Tim Kings. And hopefully, he would also feature a rework for all three races. But this is the one thing that people want the most in terms of DLC from Creative Assembly with regards to undead factions. And the information out there is he is coming and he will be the last DLC or a proper expansion. You know, it's been a long time since CA has done an expansion, one that added a different map, that is. We had Mephas of Troy, sure, you could argue that what we're getting with um, Mesopotamia is similar to that, and Pharaoh, however much that will be played, but uh, a proper expansion with a different map, which I imagine they'll do it. Like, the, I imagine they'll have him in Immortal Empires, but I also imagine that they'll do a more focused map on his quest, like Camry and Sylvania especially. But we'll see the journey to bring back Nagash. That is all. Questine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and let me know what you guys think about all of this.